Hello and welcome to a Note for God podcast. This is episode 13. See, I'm being consistent. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at a note for God. Definitely follow me over there. And don't forget that my podcast is already on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and I also upload the audio to YouTube. So within seconds that I'm finishing uh Recording the podcast, I'll upload it to YouTube, which sometimes I love a little bit more YouTube than the other platforms. It's so much easier, easier, you know what I mean? Anyway, so let's get with the program here with the episode. If you have not heard of buymeacoffee.com, let me just say this. I heard about this probably in a YouTube video or a podcast. I don't remember. Anyway, so for whatever reason, it popped up and I signed up. So definitely go over there. The link will be in your description notes. Buymeacoffee.com slash 8 note for God. If you're loving this podcast, um, I don't drink coffee, but I did say buy me a book. All the money's donated. All that stuff will be definitely used for the show, for recording. I definitely want to buy a nicer ring light because right now I just use like a lamp. Anyway, so definitely go over there and anything that I post to my Instagram, I also post on that site, buymeacoffee.com slash 8 for god So let's get started with today's episode. I'm going to be talking about Proverbs 18.21. Now, off the bat, I don't know about you, but for me, I'm like, what is Proverbs 18.21? But as soon as I read it, you will remember, right? Because I think we've heard it so much and so often that we're like, oh, that's Proverbs 18.21. So let me read it for you in three different versions, and then we're just going to break it up, right? This is the KJV version, all right? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now you know which uh, verse I'm talking about, right? New Living Translation states, The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. And the message version, which I just love because it's just so cutthroat. Words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit you choose. I mean, once in a while, if you have not read the message version, you definitely need to. But I would suggest like read the New Living Translation first or KJ um, and then go to read the message. Because sometimes you're like, wow, it's just telling you how it is. So I know you've heard of this verse many, many, many times. And sometimes you're like, what does it really mean? Right. So let me break it up. I'm going to really focus on the KJV version. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I'm going to focus on that first and then we'll just go to the second part. The definition of death, the action or fact of dying or being killed. Okay, I want you to focus on that or being killed. The destruction or permanent end of something. The destruction or permanent end of something, right? So it says death and life The definition of life is living thing, a particular type or aspect of people's existence. The quality that distinguishes a vital and functional being from a dead body. Basically, life, you're you're alive or you're dead. That's here's what it's saying. A quality that distinguishes a vital and functional being from a dead body, right? And then the other one we want to kind of breakdown is power power legal or official authority or capacity right death and life are in the power of the tongue and i don't think a lot of people think really about it but basically what it's saying is what comes out of your mouth that it is what is going to be right Even before I was saved, I was always very cautious of how or what would come out of my mouth because I knew words had power. I already knew that even before I got saved, right? And even now, now that I know 
hello, it's in the Bible. I didn't know that back then. But now that I know it's in the Bible, I'm very careful of what I say. And even if I kind of want, I just don't say, I just stop, right? I just stop saying it. Because remember what it says, death, the action or fact of dying or being killed, the destruction or permanent end of something, right? So as you're saying something or, or maybe a dream that you're like, that's never going to happen or a goal, you're never going to happen. As you are confessing it out and you're saying like, you're already destroying it. You're already per putting a permanent end of something that you didn't even give time to live. I hope that makes sense, right? And life are in the power of the tongue. And that, and that part life really brings me to the example, especially if you have kids, right? As parents, it is our job, right? It is our job to speak life into our children, right? We don't speak death over our children. Like, and by death, I mean like you can't do that, stop that. You're never going to be anything. Who cares about your goals, your dreams? Like, stop it, right? We as parents talk to them and whatever they say they want to be, you know, I'm the kind of mom's like, yes, you're going to be there. You're going to do that. Right. My kids are five and seven and at this, you know, my daughter is seven. And because I've talked so much life into them, you know, they walk around like, I am the smartest person on the planet. Mama, did you know I'm a genius? I am a genius. And then my son would say, I'm a genius too. Why? Because since birth, right? raising them it is positively or positive words all around right you are smart I would say you are a genius you are the best baby on this planet that I have you're the best brother you are the best sister mommy loves you and you affirm it and you're beautiful and you're wonderful and you're handsome because you know I have a son and there, there will come a time where your kids are going to kind of say like, oh, I can't or, or whatever. It is your job as a parent to say, we don't say those words. And you change their vocabulary to always speak positive, right? Because as a child, all things are possible. But what happens is when they start to say those little negative things and nobody's there to change it or you, you just affirm it. Yeah, you're right. You're never going to do anything. Oh, you're right. That's never going to happen. That's kind of where it starts, right? And then you have kids, you know, teenagers and upward to now feel like they fail at everything. Like they can't do anything, right? So as parents, we have to be there and say, hey, we only speak positive, positive, because you have to be careful what comes out of your mouth. And I hope you're doing that with your children, right? Because it's so funny today, I was watching a video and I'm not, she was saying something that between the ages of newborn till about six, that is where children absorb so much like you're molding your children in the in the stage of life the early stages right up until the age of six and I knew that being as a teacher I knew that so I was very and I'm still continue to be very careful what I say how I say it to them words of affirmation right you're beautiful you're so smart because that's what I want them to to continue to think of themselves, right? I don't want somebody else. I don't want them to wait for somebody else to say that to them, right? I want to say that to them. I need to affirm it and they need to continue. And when they, like my daughter had a little time where she was like, oh, no, no, this or kind of negative. And we're like, no, we're, we're not saying that, right? We have to be positive. And then you kind of bring it back to scripture, you know, for your children. Hey, in the Bible, Proverbs 18, 21 states this, like death and life are in the power of the tongue. So we have to be careful what we say. Um, so definitely, if you are a parent that is careful, 
to say certain things to your children, then why is it that sometimes we don't do that to ourselves? I hope that makes sense. Like we give that best to our children and, and we and we persist on life and bringing life and talking positive. But then for us, we're like, oh, but I can't, but I can't, right? So if we do it for them, we should definitely do it for ourselves, right? And the second part is, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof, where, or like the message Bible says, or the version I should say, they're either poison or fruit you choose, right? And you will reap the consequences. So when you say, or you think like, oh my goodness, I fail at every relationship, or I failed at this job. Why? What were you saying before that? Were you saying you were a loser? Were you saying, I can't grasp this concept of the job? I can't, I can't. Well, that's what's going to happen, right? So it's better for you not to say it. Maybe just as soon as you think you're going to say it, just stop. Just stop it. And one of the things that helped me before I was saved was, As I thought I was going to say it, before it came out of my mouth, I should say, I would stop and then automatically start saying five positive things. At first, I'm I'm, I'm going to be honest, at first it wasn't as easy because I was like, five positive things, like what, what am I supposed to say, right? But you have to train your mind. You have to train your mind. So after a while, it did become a little bit easier. And even now, even if I do have that negative thought, it's like, we stop. We stop because we have to be careful, right? And even now, you kind of go back to scripture and say, why is it that I'm feeling this way, right? Or just affirm yourself with scripture, right? Go back and affirm yourself. The Bible sex says in this Bible verse X, Y, and Z, just going back to scripture, Right. Or even thinking of a, of a story in the Bible to affirm like, wow, if, if I'm going through something, look in the book of Daniel, look what everything that he went through and he still, and God still looked out for him. Oh, look in the book of Job. I may be going through some very difficult things, but look, Job still con- was consistent in praying, consistent in looking to God and God always had his back, right? Just kind of going back to scripture and seeing, man, I'm not the only one that ha- that is going through difficult things. What does the Bible say? How was each person in the Bible able to overcome, right? So definitely always go back to scripture. What, like I said, one of my favorites is uh, the book of Daniel. That's amazing. The book of Job. Um, if you have not read that, that is definitely one where even when I was reading, I was like, oh my goodness. And then his friends kind of got annoying for me, but it's like, wow, even Joseph, if you read the story of Joseph, you're like everything that he went through, look at him. Right. And, and it's his kind of his lifespan, right. Um, when his brother sold him to slavery, if you kind of read that, you're like, wow. If he can endure that, then definitely I can endure what I'm going through because at the end, God always has your back. Um, So I definitely, when this is over, I definitely want you to go back to Proverbs 18 on your Bible. Uh, If you don't have a physical Bible, definitely get one or definitely look at your app. That is also really good. And look at Proverbs 18, 21, dissect it, read it over. And even maybe screenshot it and put it in the back screen of your phone or, you know, the screensaver and be careful. And when you catch yourself saying something negative, just stop, stop mid sentence or mid word. And no, I stop. I'm I'm not going to say that. And you're going to say the opposite. Right. And sometimes you may feel a little bit silly because you're like, I don't, it's not even true, but you're going to start getting into the habit of being and speaking positive about your life, about your situation life. And if you have kids, you would never, right? You would never speak negative to your children. So don't do it to yourself. So that's definitely something that I would like, love to for you to go back and read. It is Proverbs 18, 21. 
this was super short, but it's such a powerful verse that I don't think a lot of people truly dissect it and understand it. And, or we do understand it, we've heard it, but then we're like, ah, not a big deal, but it is a big deal. So I definitely would love for you to memorize it, write it down a few times. And the assignment for today is, or tomorrow, whenever, is when you're going to say something negative, stop. Just stop. And try to come up with three to five think positive things before or I'm sorry, after you said it, all right? So definitely go back and read it. Again, I love to end the podcast the episode with Matthew 25, 23, because when I close my eyes in this world and open up my eyes to see God, my Father, I want Him to reach His hand out to me and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Again, don't forget to share this podcast. This is a very powerful, especially Proverbs 18, 21, and don't forget to go to buymeacoffee.com slash eight note for God. All contributions will definitely go into the podcast to buy their ring light. I need one of those, especially for the YouTube channel. All right. So take care and see you here. See you in the next episode.